This is the Facebook portal and is the best video calling device you can buy. It also has Alexa built in, so it's kind of like a smart speaker too. I'm going to go over its design and all the different features it has, and at the end of the video, I'll let you know if it's worth buying or not. And if you want a more detailed written review, head on over to techtechandmoretech.com or check the link in the description below. Starting with the design, it comes in either white or black, and it's dominated by the 10 inch screen that it has. It's a 1280 by 800 resolution screen, and it has great viewing angles. And honestly, for what it's for and where it would be, it's perfectly fine. It's not amazing, but it works just great. Below the screen are two speakers, and they're definitely tuned for voice over anything else. Music and videos, they sound okay, but they lack any bass. And if this is gonna be like your primary speaker for like the kitchen while you're doing stuff, I would look elsewhere if that's your primary concern. Above the screen, you got a 12 megapixel, 140 degree field of view camera. And that's kind of the star of the show, and we'll get to that in a bit. Above the top of the closure, you've got a microphone off and on button and volume up and down. Pretty straightforward. It also comes with a little lens cap, so if you really want to make sure it's private, you just cover the camera up like that. The build quality is decent. It's nice, solid materials, not flimsy in any way, but I can't help but feel like it is like a first-gen product, in terms of design at least. It's a bit too big and bulky for my liking. It's not ugly per se, but it's not exactly winning any beauty awards in terms of design. And compared to the Google Home Hub or even the Amazon Echo Show, I definitely think it's the worst design out of the three. Let's take a step back to the camera. Like I said, it's the star of the show. The video quality is excellent, but that'll obviously depend on the internet connection of the person that you're talking to. But beyond just the camera is the software that it uses to make the video chatting experience a class of its own. So thanks to the 140 degree field of view, you're always in frame. But more than that, as you walk around, it'll actually move the camera and track you that way too. So the person on the other end of your video never has to worry about did you just leave altogether and forget to come back, it'll always see you. It also does a really good job of zooming in and out. So if you get close to the camera, it'll zoom in, and if you get further from the camera, it'll zoom out. It can also detect multiple people, so if someone else walks into the room, it'll then zoom out to kind of make sure that everyone is in frame. Facebook is heavily advertising this as a video calling slash communications hub more than anything else. And for good reason, there really isn't any other video experience quite like it. The calling is currently only for Facebook users, which is like 2 billion people, so most people. On the main screen, it shows your most common contacts. Then you can initiate a call with them either just by tapping on their icon or by using the portal's own built-in AI. They can then answer on their phones, tablets, computers, portal, basically whatever device they're signed into Facebook with. There's also a story mode, which basically kind of overlays graphics on the screen, and it's kind of designed for uh, family members to keep in touch, like a grandparent reading uh, their grandkid a bedtime story or something like that, just to make it a little bit more immersive. As for the rest of the software that can be found on the portal, on the main screen you can have just like a screensaver that has rotating images of either pictures you're tagged in or that you and your friends are tagged in. If you scroll over, you'll see the smart home portion of the portal. And it's kind of bare bones. There's the usual applications like Pandora, Spotify, YouTube, and whatnot. And they all work fine, but they're not great. I'm not the biggest fan of using the touchscreen on smart displays. I much prefer to only use them with my voice. And for the most part, that works fine. Um, but when you have to use the touchscreen part, it's never quite as good as like my iPad. And in that case, I'm just gonna go grab my iPad. Smart home compatibility is almost equal to that of Amazon Echo devices, but not quite. It does have Alexa built in, but it doesn't have all the different skills that all the other Echo devices have. What you can do is you sign in with your Amazon account, and then anything that's in the Alexa app that you have configured will work with the portal for the most part. My Hue lights work just fine, so did my Ecobee, but I couldn't see my Arlo security camera, for example. Um, and that's kind of lame, because you kind of go into it assuming you're gonna get all the same skills, but then at the end of the day, it's kind of like a nerfed version of Alexa. There are some subtle differences in how Alexa presents itself and is used on the portal versus on like an Echo Show. I have a flash briefing set up so that it kind of runs through the different news of the day. On the Echo Show, it'll show video clips of the news that it's talking about, whereas on the portal, it'll only play the audio portion. On top of that, possibly one of my biggest grievances, and this is actually true of the Google Home Hub as well, is that 
in the screensaver mode, all it does is just slide through pretty pictures. Sometimes it'll have like the, the time and the temperature and like the forecast for the day up, which is nice, I'm not gonna deny that. But one of my favorite features of the Echo Show, for example, is that it will cycle through relevant news stories for me kind of all the time. I have different things that I'm interested in, like sports and you know, pop culture, whatever. And that kind of prompts me to engage with the device. You know, it'll say like the, the headline of some interesting story and then you'll be like, Alexa, tell me about the world's largest cookie or whatever. And that's actually something I really, really enjoy. And it's just not there on the portal or the Google Home Hub for that matter. We have yet to see quite how invested Facebook is gonna be with this device. I think there are some clear future updates that would be nice, such as Instagram and WhatsApp integration, considering Facebook owns both of those companies. If you didn't know that, now you do. Instagram would be nice having, you know, the most recent stories sliding through or most recent posts coming through from your friends. WhatsApp obviously also supports video calling, so that would be, you know, pretty nice as well. So all of this brings us to the golden question. Should you buy the Facebook portal? Now, based on the information that we've presented so far, it seems like a decent buy. It costs $199 for the 10 inch version and $299 for the 15 inch gargantuan version that I don't know why anyone would buy. That comes about in line with something like an Echo Show or one of those Lenovo smart displays. So pricing is okay. In terms of features, obviously if video chatting is like something that you do all the time, that feature is gonna be better than anything else. So from that point of view, it might be worth it. Smart home features are lackluster in my opinion, and that's probably not the one you'd want to buy. But we have not talked about the major elephant in the room, it's privacy. Facebook's current stance on data collection for the portal is that it is end-to-end -end encrypted in terms of what you are talking and what the camera is seeing when you're engaged in a video you know, chat. It does collect metadata though, which is who you're calling, how long you're calling them for, and when you're calling them. Not particularly intrusive, but this is Facebook we're talking about. Facebook has proven to be horrendously irresponsible with private data. Maybe one day Facebook will redeem themselves and prove that they are somewhat trustworthy with their data. And But for that reason alone, I cannot recommend someone buy the Facebook portal with better competitors out there, no matter how good the video calling experience is. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will get to them as best I can. If you liked the video, hit that like and subscribe button. There's plenty more videos to come. Until next time, see ya. Problem solved.